Hey guys and welcome to another quick Pi video. In this video we're going to go over how to install an ESP based PIR motion sensor that you can use with HomeKit for your automations and other HomeKit uses. So let's get started with the installation first on the Raspberry Pi. So with all my videos there's a simple uh, SSH script that you'll need to run. So make sure you have hap-node.js already installed. The links will be in the description. So run the command as shown on the screen. If you already have MQTT brokers such as Mosquito installed on your Pi, it's going to skip Mosquito's installation. But if you don't, it'll install all that and configure it for you. So once you enter this, you're going to see the few process lines. So you can see Mosquito already installed. So this could take about a minute, so I've sped right through it. So you can see the process complete. So now we want to go to the accessories folder in hap-node.js. So cd hap-node.js slash accessories. And now that you're in the accessories folder, run the sudo nano mqtt motion sensor. So if you just click tab, it should give it to you. Click enter. You're going to be able to edit this file. So now you're going to want to edit a few lines of this file. So the first few lines you can skip. So if you scroll down, right down to around mqtt topic. So this is what the sensor's uh, communication name with MQTT is going to be. So in my case, I had a secondary bedroom mo sen motion sensor. So you could set it to hallway motion sensor. You can set it to garage motion sensor. But make sure when you set this, you have no spaces. So I'm going to leave it to my default as secondary bedroom. Make sure there's no spaces or any special characters. So as long as it's all numbers and letters, it should be good to go. Make sure you also write this down with the correct case because it's essential, it has to match. So then for sensor name, this is what the sensor is going to be seen in as HomeKit. So in HomeKit, you can have it labeled as hallway motion sensor, or in my case, I can say garage motion sensor, or in my case, I'm most probably going to do secondary bedroom because that's where this motion sensor is going to be placed. So there you can see secondary bedroom motion sensor. And so once you have all that, you can do control X to save the file, click Y and click enter and it's going to save the file. So if you go CD dot dot, you're going to enter the hap dash node.js directory. And uh, if you already have done my tutorials before, you know that you can just run sudo node bridged core dot js to start running the node. So you can see that the node is running and since there are no errors, that means you've installed everything properly and configured it properly as well. But you can't use anything with the console, right? So if you've used my forever tutorial, which will also be in the description, everything starts at boot. So you can just run sudo forever start bridged core.js and click enter and everything should start in the background. As you can see, forever has now started processing the file. Now you want to hop onto your PC or Mac and we're going to do the Arduino installation of the software. So make sure you have your ESP8266 ready for flashing and as well have it ready for wiring. Okay, so before we connect our ESPA266 to our computer and start programming it, make sure you wire your PIR sensor to the ESP. So in this example, I'm using an ESP07, but this works with any kind of ESPA266. So your ESP12s, your Wemos, uh, any of the Node MCUs, those all work with this tutorial. So you want to wire the ground to the ground on your ESP, the VCC to the 3.3 volt or 5 volt pin depending on which ESP you have to the 5 volt on the PIR and then the out pin you can select any of the pins as long as they're not being used for another function. So I, I would recommend staying away from any of the flash pins or the tra uh, serial pins but other than that you can use any of the pins. So in this example I'm just using GPI05. Make sure you write down the pin number because we will be needed when we're programming. Now let's get onto our computer and start programming using the Arduino software. Okay now on your computer you want to open a web browser of your choice and go to this link, goo.gl slash riqvfc, the Q and F need to be capital, and click enter. So this loads the Arduino sketch for your ESPA266 that I've made. So you wanna use Control S on Windows or Command S on Mac and save this file. So I'm gonna be saving it to my desktop. And click don't append, and on Windows there should be a similar message. Make sure it doesn't add an extension. So now on my desktop, you can see the .ino file. It also has the Arduino thumbnail. So once you click on it, it's going to say it wants to make it its own folder. Just click OK. And so now the sketch loads into the Arduino IDE. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So the first few lines are just the description commentary. And then the bottom few lines are actually where the configuration takes place. So the first line is your Wi-Fi access point name. So in my case, I'm going to set it to my Wi-Fi name, which is QuickPi. 
And then for the password, you're going to set it to your Wi-Fi password, which is, in my case, also QuickPi. And for the MQTT server, you want to set it to the IP of your Raspberry Pi. So make sure you get that from your Raspberry Pi and write it down as the MQTT server IP. So once you have those three set, you can move on to the MQTT name, topic, and ending. So the MQTT name is what the device is going to communicate as. You can set that to anything you'd like. And then for the MQTT topic, make sure this matches the part in the accessory file. So it has to have the same capitalization and no space. So for PIR pin, that's the pin your PIR sensor will be connected to on your ESP. So it could be set to P5. In my case, I'm going to set it to D0. So the bool, so this is actually the most important part of the script. So if you want to use low power mode, which uh, actually delays alerts, but uses less power on the ESP, set this to true. If you don't really care about power usage on the ESP, just set that to false and that should be fine. So then go to include library and go to the manage libraries. So this should open the library manager of the Arduino IDE. Once everything loads up, you want to actually install just one library. So make sure you install the P-U-B, S-U-B, C-L-I-E, and T. So this is actually the MQTT library. So you can just select the latest version and then click install. And this downloads it and then uh, updates the list. And then you should see the installed message. So once you see that, you can close the um, uh, library manager. So next you want to upload the script to your ESP8266. So first you want to select your board. So I'm going to select a generic ESP as that's what I have. Set your upload speed to your preference and select your serial device. And so once you do that, you want to just make sure you open the serial monitor. And you can center that right there. And so now I'm going to actually upload it. And so it does take a few seconds to compile. Depending on your computer, it could go faster. But for some reason, my serial monitor actually closed. Seems to be a bug with my Arduino version. And so I've actually speeded through the upload process because it takes about a minute. And there you can see it says done uploading. So now once you see that done uploading message, you can actually open the serial monitor again. And so now that you see the serial monitor, it's actually given an IP address. And since my hand is right in front of the motion sensor, you can see it's publishing the true message. So that means the whole sensor is working. So you can actually restart your ESP. So you can see that it takes just about a second to boot. And then you can see the IP address and as well as the message published. So if you don't have a hand in front of your sensor or you're not triggering it, you should just see a, a print of zero, the number zero, which means that there's no sensor detected. But this is basically the end of the software installation on the ESP8266. So if you don't see any messages here, that means you've configured everything properly. And now I'm going to show you how to use the motion sensor for automations and as well as how it looks like when it reacts on my iPhone in the home app. Okay, so now I'm in the home app and ha there you can see the hallway motion sensor. So if I press and hold on it, it says motion sensor ready. I can go to details and I can explore around. So here you can see in the model, you can see the topic uh, of the ESP8266 uh, MQTT. And then you can change the room. So in my case, I'm going to set it to secondary bedroom. And then you want to click done. So once you do that, uh, you can just press out. Now you want to go to rooms and here you can see the room where you put the motion sensor, in my case secondary bedroom, I can see the sensor. So I can press and hold on it and go to details again. And now I'm going to go into the status and notifications area. So here I already have notifications enabled, but here it's going to be turned off for you. So you want to turn it on and then go back and click done. So the time part's only for iOS 11. So if you're already on iOS 11, you can set what time you want notifications, but that's not needed now. Once you click done, it saves that. So now I'm going to add a sample automation that turns on the lights when it detects motion. So you can see I'm quickly going through here. So when it detects motion, it turns on the lights. And then I'm going to set it to turn off lights when it stops detecting motion. So then you can see that. Click done. So I have it turned off. So now give it about 20 seconds to sync all the automations through your uh, iCloud account. So I'm giving it 20 seconds. So there you can see if I wave my hand over the sensor, it says triggered, but the lights haven't been turned on. But let me try again. And there you can see it's turned on the secondary light stand immediately. And I turned it off as soon as it stopped detecting motion. So if you have the automation properly set, you can see it's working flawlessly. And you can see the notification on top as well. So if I wave my hand over, you can see the motion detected by secondary bedroom motion sensor. And if you do have a camera in the same room, it sends you a snapshot from the camera. So you can see it works perfectly well. And uh, if see this uh, automation is kind of getting a bit annoying, so I'm going to disable it. So you can see I'm going to disable each one manually. 
click done so I disabled it so when I wave my hand over it's still activating the lights despite I've disabled it so like before you have to wait about 20 seconds for everything to sync around your iCloud account and now when I wave my hand over there you go it's not turning on the lights and so yeah guys that is the ending of the tutorial hope you guys enjoyed it um, let me know if you have any questions or issues in the comments and I'll for sure uh, reach out to you guys and help you out. The quickest way to reach me for help is through my Twitter uh, direct chat. So just follow me and then DM me. All DMs are open. So if you do have any problems with this tutorial, please contact me through Twitter or through the comments. Guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.